So it's not like it hasn't been coming for a while and it's not like there haven't been the rumours and the stories and the trials and the tribulations along the way. But overnight confirmation that Liam Lawson has made it to F1 in his own seat, his own drive. Uh, his chance to put himself into the history books in a sport this country has played an outsized role in since names like McLaren and Hulm forged their reputation. So what's it like to finally get the deal done? Liam Lawson is with us. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Very well. Congratulations. How does it feel? Thank you. It's um, it now finally does sort of feel real. Obviously, I I had I, I knew about it for the last sort of um, the last probably two weeks. Um, but but until it's out there to the world, it's it's obviously doesn't ever really feel set in stone. And I couldn't tell anybody. So um, no, it's it's a very cool feeling. Who told you and how does it work? Is helmet involved? Christian involved? How does it work? It had been it had been the plan for a long time now. Um, where this was sort of where it was leading at least um or you know obviously i had a contract date that that needed to be um sort of fulfilled so they basically it was always going towards this way and then a, a couple of weeks ago um basically they told me this is what was going to happen um and then basically not long after that um it was basically set in stone so um yeah have you celebrated uh, not really. Um, obviously, I'm very happy, but um, you know, it's, it's it's six rounds left of the season, so I've come in at a you know difficult time. Um, it's going to be a very challenging point. Obviously, you know, all these guys have done three quarters of a season now, so I have to try and um, try and compete with that now um, at tracks that I haven't done as well. So it's going to be challenging. Um, I've I've spoken to my parents obviously and spoken to everybody that's that's been behind me on on this journey um, and it's very very special but we don't have much time to to really let it sink in we're gonna get straight to work. So let me come back to the work side of it in just a moment. Mum and dad must be absolutely thrilled. Yeah, they are. Um, obviously, it's funny because when I when I found out and I got to call everybody, um, the first sort of words or the first things that they said all of them including my dad my my mum and everybody all the sponsors behind me from from day one i could hear the relief in their voice before anything so it wasn't excitement or it was just pure relief which is also how i felt to be honest because it's it's been obviously a huge journey and uh a lot of people have, have put a lot into this so um yeah it's 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 it was very exciting for confirmation's sake you've got till the end of the season you don't know for next year is that correct or not Yes, that's that's correct. I've got, basically got to the end of this season, um, and then I'll find out more uh, as the season goes on. Basically, so um, yeah, at this stage, it's it's the, it's the six races plus the three sprints. Do you know what you need to do this season to get to next year? Uh, I need to perform. Basically, um, I need to try and and. Um, obviously show my worth in F1 and I would say do do a, do a, a similar job to what, to what I did last year. That's what's given me the shot now is, is what happened last year. So I just need to do enough to, to stay in the seat next year. Okay. The, uh, tell us what you can, tell us what you can't. But but um, I'm watching you last weekend in Singapore. You're standing in the garage. You've got a microphone there and some sort of earpiece. You're obviously talking to somebody, feeding them some sort of information about the car. On a weekend when Daniel Ricciardo is clearly being sacked and everybody knows, you know that they know, they know that you know. How does that feel and how does that work? Not good, honestly. Um, that You know, Singapore was definitely not an enjoyable weekend um, for, for me just because I obviously we all knew what was sort of coming. And, um, you know, at the same time, Daniel has always been very good to me uh, in, in, in a lot of ways when I drove last year. Um, and then even this season, he's, he's always been somebody that, um, there's never been, I've never felt, you know, the sort of uh, in, in competition with him or anything like that. He never made it feel like that. So, um, it, it's, it's not, it wasn't a nice feeling. Um, but obviously this for me is, uh, you know, I get one shot at F1 and, um, it's, it's come now and I'm obviously grateful for that opportunity, but I now need to take it with both hands. And at the same time, you know, he's, he's, he said the same thing to me, um, and and he said, you know, you need to you need to make the most of it. So 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 he yeah. he struck me publicly anyway as being exceedingly good about it. Has he been that way to you? He has. Um, he did a, he did a, a very good job on the weekend. Honestly, I have a huge amount of respect for how he dealt with everything because 
um you know i can't really imagine what that it's a similar position i was in last year but obviously the guy is is a lot more public a lot more uh, famous than i am so um you know he's getting he's getting a lot of questions uh and and trying to sidestep those um he did a very good job at so um yeah just going back a little bit in time, uh, you did a couple of testing days at Silverstone and Monza in the last couple of weeks. Were they make or break days the way some of these stories were made out to be, or was it all sort of set in stone anyway? No, it was. Um, they were all evaluation days, uh, and and they were designed to put lots of pressure on me. Um, and um, that was basically it. Was for you know an event like this where to, to throw me in a bit like last year, throw me in mid season. They needed to know that. Um, you know, obviously, I'd I'd somewhat perform, so they were they were definitely evaluation days. I can't remember the documentary because I watched a couple, but there's one there. You're sitting in a chair, and you were told in Singapore, in other words, this time last year, having done what you had done in place of Ricardo, there was no seat. Yeah, and and you yep. think you think back to that moment in Singapore, and then the moment the other day in Singapore, you can't write that stuff, can you? I know it's exactly a year later, and I, I'll, you know, I'll never forget that feeling last year that I had because, uh, you know, I just had sort of, I gone into the week and just had my uh, my absolute best quality and made Q3, and I got told then basically that um, that I wouldn't be driving next year, and we obviously fast forward a year, it hasn't been the most enjoyable year, but um, obviously I'm 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 glad that we that we all stuck with it. Um, and if anything, you know, I'm, I'm better prepared now. There's so much to learn in F1 that, honestly, even if you're not driving and you're reserved, you're, you're absorbing so much information that, yeah, um, yeah it's, it's going to be a big step, but um, I'm glad we stuck in there. Last time we talked, you, it, was, it was the first time you were going to go into a season not literally getting behind the wheel. Obviously, that's changed now, but... Do you feel closer to being able to get into the car from all the sim work and the experience you've done? In other words, the leap isn't as great as it might have been. I think, yes, potentially, um, but it's it's always a big you know it's always a big jump. So it's going to be it's going to be tough um, to jump in. Austin, I haven't done before either. Um, so even though I've done plenty of sim work, it's going to be it's going to be a big challenge. But um, I would say, you know, I would say I'm better prepared, definitely more prepared this year than I was last year. Um, at the same time, it's slightly later in the season this year. So, um, you know, as I said, these guys have done, a, you know, three quarters of a season mm. and there's nothing like, obviously I've been training like crazy all year to try and be ready for something like this. But um, even in the few tests that I've done this year, it's there's nothing like being race fit and it's going to be it's going to be challenging in Austin. Mind you, you must have looked at Colapinto and look what he's done. If he can, you can. Yeah, with uh, yeah, he's uh, I've raced him in, in the past, um, and uh, I, to be fair, I always rated him very highly, um, and and I think it's it's great that you know more of us younger guys are, are getting a chance, um, because it's so hard to break into F1, and and at least now there's a couple of us doing it that hopefully it it pushes more teams to to give young drivers opportunities. What's your experience on, so you've got um, Austin coming up, Mexico, Brazil, Las Vegas, of course, and the two Middle East races to end the season, plus the sprint races. How much experience have you got on those tracks? Only the ones that I did last year. So the ones I haven't done are Austin, uh, Vegas, Brazil. Yeah. Um, fortunately, I've done a free practice session in Mexico once. Um, so it's still going to be challenging, but at least I've driven the track. Um, and then same with Abu Dhabi. Um, I've driven it in in Formula One. I did a free practice session there um, in the Red Bull. So um, it'll just be those those tracks that I haven't done. Um, but the the tough thing about about Austin is it's a sprint weekend. So it'll be one practice session and then straight into sprint quality. And um, and obviously, you know, I'm going to have to try and learn as much as I can in one session, and then go into qualifying. Yeah. Are you ready for the off track stuff? The you're a star now, and we need to talk to you a lot. I think I've uh, I've luckily had a bit of experience with it last year, so um, I'm better prepared for it. But uh, it's probably the one thing that us drivers don't really do. You know, there's no real preparation for it. It's something that you just kind of thrown into, and we're doing all this work to try and be as ready to to drive the car as fast as possible, and and try and focus on just that. But um, as you said, the reality is there's a lot of off track um, attention, and and um, you know, even in the last three hours. Um, I've been trying to sort of 
keep my uh, my mind off it a little bit, but um, my phone's absolutely exploded, and it's something that yeah. um, I have to get used to. I'm not surprised. What's your assessment of the car and what you can do with it for the rest of the season? It's been, I think, where we started the year was really strong. Um, the car was going in a really good direction, and then uh, as the upgrades came, the other teams developed quite quickly, and, and the stuff we were developing quite often what works in theory doesn't always work on 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 track and in reality and it, it was kind of what was happening so but I, I think now we're in a um in a more upwards swing um singapore the car was quite strong in qualifying we struggled in the race but uh, we also have more upgrades coming for later in the season so uh it'll be similar to last year in in the way that we are pushing for every point available and that's the target Fantastic. Mate, I, 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 obviously on behalf of everyone who listens, uh, you, 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 I assume you have some idea of, of how thrilled we all are for you. And uh, all we can do is wish you the very, very best and know that each weekend we're, we're watching you, we're following you and, and think it's just magnificent news. Thank you. And to, yeah, I mean, to everybody listening and to everybody who's, who's stuck with me for um, all the years leading up to this, um, yeah, thank you. Because obviously it's a um, a huge journey, and for me this is this is what I've what I've dreamed of doing since I was a kid. So um, obviously now we have a, another mountain to climb um, going into the season, and hopefully driving next year as well. Hopefully this is the start of, of Formula One for me. But I just want to say thank you to everybody because um, I appreciate it a lot. Fantastic. Good to see you, mate, and go well, and we'll talk soon.